when you're looking at your ketone level, you're in essence looking at a mirror image of your insulin level. So if you, if you have, if your ketones are very low, let's say they're undetectable up to maybe 0.4 millimole, your insulin levels are, are, you can, you can guarantee your insulin levels are high. If your ketone levels are 0.5 or higher, the higher your ketone level is, the lower your insulin level is. So it's, it's sort of a way to look at a mirror image of your, of your insulin levels, and they can absolutely be too high. So for most people, um, uh, I would consider a ketone level uh, that's, you know, sp if you're spending too much time at four millimole or higher, I mean, it's, it's okay to float up there from time to time, but if you're spending a lot of time up in that higher range, you're kind of edging into starvation range ketosis where you don't want to spend a lot of time up there uh, because you'll, you'll, be ris <clears throat> you'll be risking malnourishment. But then the other question is, could your insulin be too low? So if your ketones are very high, that means your insulin is very low. So how high is too high ketone-wise? How low is too low insulin-wise? So we, we know from people with type 1 diabetes that yes, that insulin can absolutely be too low. So people with type 1 diabetes, they have an autoimmune condition that, uh, that, that damages and destroys the uh, cells in, in the pancreas that are producing insulin. So people with type 1 diabetes, which is not the same as type 2 diabetes, uh, people with type 1 diabetes, uh, this is an autoimmune condition where there is, there is virtually no insulin being produced uh, by the body anymore. And that is a very dangerous and deadly situation. We do need a certain amount of insulin. It's kind of what's called basal insulin. We need a certain amount of baseline insulin being released into the bloodstream at all times in order for our cells to function properly. Cells do require a small amount of insulin at all times. And so uh, can you, with diet alone, drive your insulin levels down so low that, that it's metabolically unhealthy for you? Theoretically, you could, um, but this would this would again sort of reflect a starvation state. So if you're not eating and if you're not eating enough food for your personal needs, your insulin level will be too low, your ketone levels will be too high, and that will be suboptimal for your health. Um, for example, uh, to be very concrete, women of reproductive age can lose their periods if their insulin levels go too low, if their nutritional status goes too low, if their ketones are too high. Um, you can see in certain cases, uh, for example, in uh, women who are breastfeeding, if they follow a very strict ketogenic diet, uh, there have been published case reports of women ending up in the hospital because of keto acidosis. Um, this is not something you'll see in most adults who do not have type one diabetes or who are not taking certain medications. These are special states, pregnancy and breastfeeding are special metabolic states where you need more insulin uh, in pregnancy and breastfeeding because pregnancy and breastfeeding are special states of growth and production, mm -hmm. cell division. So you, insulin is a growth hormone. If you don't have enough insulin, you will not be able to support a healthy pregnancy. You will not be able to feed two people. On, you need more food, you need more calories, you need more protein, you need more nutrients you need higher insulin levels. So um, there's a lot of nuance in this answer, but the, the bottom line is, yes, it is possible for your insulin levels to be too low, just as it is possible for your insulin levels to be too high. We have seen people with super low insulin and they've been on a carnivore keto diet and we, over time working with them, we find out that they're under eating a lot or they're overly fasting. And then in terms of the pregnancy, most people we've ever worked with that have been carnivore prior to become pregnant, and then they were following a carnivore diet, we find that they have a really hard time staying strict carnivore for the first two trimesters, because I do think their insulin is lower than the body demands. And so a lot of people start getting meat aversions and, uh, and just have a hard time being strict ketogenic. So I, I have also seen that in our practice as well. So unless they are able to eat a lot more meat, which a lot of people aren't, then they have to add in some amount of carbs to have a healthier pregnancy, at least in the beginning. 